If you just look at McShay's top 10 right now, you see the impact that all this is having on it. Six of the top 10 players have either opted out of the coming season or had their conference postponed the season till the spring. Justin Fields, the most notable among them, but there are a lot there that matter. So McShay is back with me here as are Tim Hasselbeck and Lewis. And very quickly, McShay, we, we talk about the two quarterbacks everybody knows, but Lance is the guy. Just give us a quick thumbnail on him and, and the impact of not having a season on him because this is, the, you know, one of these small school guys that everyone thinks is going to emerge this year. Yep. Yeah, he, I mean, he's the most underrated player in this draft class so far. And I've done 150 players in their val evaluation and, and just studying the tape this summer. But when you watch him, he's so poised in the pocket. He makes a lot of throws off platform. He can move around, and he can drive the ball down the field. You know, he comes from the same school as Carson Wentz. When Wentz came out that year, everyone was like, ah, maybe second, third round range going into his final year. He had some injuries, but he obviously became the number two overall pick. I don't think there's a huge difference. When you look at this quarterback group, it's Trevor Lawrence at the top, Justin Fields from Ohio State right behind him, but I don't think there's a massive gap between Lance and Fields. And so I think it's going to be fascinating to see. And the problem is Fields is now not playing, and, and obviously Lance is not with the FCS canceling football as well. So you're talking about two of the top three quarterbacks as of right now will not play football in over 15 months if they wind up getting drafted into the NFL. It's a real nightmare for NFL GMs and evaluators thinking about how long it will be with these quarterbacks not playing an actual game. And how about for the quarterbacks themselves? Uh, themselves? Tim Hasselbeck, it, for the ones who do not have a season this fall, what should they be doing right now to mm -hmm. make sure they are in the best position they are capable of being when the draft rolls around or next season rolls around? Well, the reality is if you're the, one of those three guys that Todd just talked about, your best move at this point, assuming, well, let's just, excuse me, I'll take Lawrence out of it, assuming the ACC plays, because that's their position right now. But if you're Fields or Lance, really what you do is you sign with an agent who's going to pay for your training, and you start getting ready for pro days, combines, and an eventual season as a pro. That's what you do right now, because the idea of spring football, which I know has been talked about quite a bit this morning on your show, Greeny, Look, it just doesn't make sense for guys that are rated as highly as those two quarterbacks are. And so at this point for them, the best move is evaluate and make a decision on an agent and figure out how you're going to train and get ready because that's all you can do at this See, point. You sort of answered my second question, but in, in the event, so I want to make sure that we're clear, in the event that Ohio State has a spring season, are you? what would you tell Justin Fields he should do? No shot. I wouldn't even consider it. I mean, it, listen, if, if Fields is going to go somewhere in the first round, which we all believe that he will, uh, then it makes zero sense whatsoever for him to be playing football at a time where the NFL draft is happening. He shouldn't do it. And I know that, look, he's a guy that would benefit from playing more. I'll give you another one. Trey Lance would benefit from a season. There's no doubt about it. You look at what Wentz did at North Dakota State. Following him was a guy named Easton Stick, who the Chargers drafted, who benefited from the reps there. It's a good program. Those guys are well coached, and they come, you know, they've come to the NFL, you know, prepared. And so Trey Lance would benefit from that as well. But at the same time, I, you know, either guy it doesn't make sense for either of them to be playing in the springtime when they're going to be drafted at that time and then being trying to get ready to play in the NFL starting in, you know, what really could be July of next year. How about it, Lewis? How, how about if there is a spring next year? How will those guys, uh, some people will play and some of them will be draft eligible. How will that impact all of their decisions and, and the NFL's decisions about them? Yeah, I mean, obviously more data is data is always something that scouts and GMs want. So um, obviously they'll take it into consideration. Obviously there's risk that comes along with getting hurt that close to the draft and that close to, you know, OTAs, mini camps, and then, you know, the training camp of the 2021 season. But that's just the risk that you would have to take if you're someone who right now your draft stock is in question as to where exactly you fall on that scale. And, you know, I, I think – We'd have to see first and foremost, you know, like what would a spring program look like? What would a spring season look like? What what are we actually looking like? Like when would training camp start? When would games start? How long would they go? Would it actually run into the draft? Would players still be playing games when the draft rolls around? I mean, 
See, these, these are all questions that right now scouts couldn't even bother, you know, to really try and mount, uh, wrap their mind around. Because I think right now, obviously, when you're talking about the Big Ten and the Pac-12, I mean, scouts now and GMs now are having to reconfigure, okay, look, this is what we're going to do as far as evaluating those players. We're going to obviously, obviously use 2019 tape, and then our best scouts, our best personnel directors are going to have to tap into their very best contacts at these schools and make sure that they have the information necessary in terms of personal and football character because that's all you can go on. And then you're going to have to use a relationship with agents to try and make sure that these players are working out, that they're in shape, that they're healthy, that none of these guys have suffered any kind of injuries that you don't know about. I mean, really, scouts and GMs are going to have to be privatized from now until the combine and then on through the pre-draft process in the draft because you really don't have the same kind of access and the same kind of data to draw off of that you normally would. And it's going to be the same for everybody. So it's not like anybody has a competitive advantage. But still, it's not – this doesn't help the players. This doesn't help the NFL. This pandemic, obviously, is helping nobody. It's hurting everything. Absolutely. And, McShay, you made an well, interesting – the, the Go other ahead, thing, Yeah. I was just going to say, the other thing is that the league can move the draft back to the, basically the first weekend in, in June. So if there is a spring season, that could be an opportunity to finish the season prior to the draft. But I still contend – that anyone who has a first-round grade will definitely choose not to play if they're draft eligible. And I, I would guess around 100 or so players would say, you know what, I'm not going to go play a six, eight, ten game season in the spring and then have to go into the draft and then immediately go to you know, rookie training camp and, and get ready for a 16-game NFL season just four months away. It's too much for the body to handle. And that's why I think agents – coaches, everyone who's going to talk to these players when they're really legitimately trying to make a decision, if they have it in their best interest, the player's interest, they'll say, you can't play in the spring and then be ready to go into your rookie year in the NFL. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.